What is going on everybody? It's the France and we are here for our Monday Night Raw review for December the 20th, 2021. There, were one, there is one episode of Monday Night Raw left in the year 2021. That of course will be next week. And this is the last Monday, this is the last WWE show that I'm going to be reviewing this week as I don't review my NXT anymore. I think it's a load of trash. And SmackDown is taped. It was taped last week. I could give you the spoilers, but I don't think you really care. Oh, that's right. Um, Sami Zayn won a battle royal to be the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. Tony Storm got beat by pinfall in for the Women's Championship. Drew McIntyre and the New Day faced off and beat the Bloodline. So, I'm sorry, not mad. Dude. It, whatever. Anyway, that was, that's all you have for SmackDown this coming Friday. Do not care. Moving on. Tonight, we had Monday Night Raw. And they're building towards day one. Cool. And the WWE Championship, of course, is going to be online in a fatal four-way. So what do you think WWE got plans to do to get you hyped, inclination marks hyped, for that match at day one? Oh, that's right. We're going to do that. Can they coexist? Can the men in that match coexist in a match tonight? Is That was your main event. And it's just typical, lazy WWE booking. I am so sick of seeing this stupid can they coexist garbage every time we turn around. Every time I turn around, you see, oh, can they coexist? And people talk shit on, w on AEW for having Lee Moriarty face off against CM Punk a couple weeks ago. Because that was, that was worse than a can they coexist fucking bullshit we saw tonight. Also, Damian Priest is in a number in a championship contenders match against Dolph Ziggler. Why? Because WWE has nobody for Damian Priest that they won, and they gotta figure out how to get him a title match. So there's that. Also, we have not one, but two talk shows tonight as WWE decides to bring back the cutting edge. With Maurice clearly setting a trap for Edge, allowing Miz to get the one up again, telling you all you need to know how that match is going to happen at day one. And the Miz has AJ Styles and oh, Moss on his show and practically break and pretty much just breaking up that team, which we all should have seen coming because WWE has like. And Omos and Ace Styles and Omos, so they, their time has come. It was time to break this team up. There was nothing left for them to do. They won the tag team titles at WrestleMania. You weren't going to see them win the tag team titles probably ever again. So it was time to break them up. Which AJ Styles apparently is going to be going to NXT tomorrow to deal with Grayson Waller. Why? Because Vince McMahon's version of NXT was doing so well. It was that Vince McMahon knew how to get NXT to the up to where he wanted it to be because Triple H couldn't do a good enough job apparently. But here we are. You have to rely on main roster talent to come down and fix NXT because you couldn't do the damn job. Wow, I'm not surprised whatsoever that this it's come down to this that AJ Styles is going to have to come from Monday Night Raw to deal and like try and make NXT watchable. It's desperation to get AJ Styles is coming in to try and help NXT. It's just dumb. Absolutely dumb. Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan's feud continues as we see a very, very poor um fight at Becky Lynch I'm um, sorry, Seth Rollins gym or Seth Rollins training school. Where Lip Morgan creams a plant that Becky Lynch set up so she could try and get the drop on Lip Morgan. And it just, that entire fight scene just looks so bad. So, so bad. I don't know who directed it. I know who scripted it, but I don't know who directed it. It was just bad. Absolutely bad. The show started off the same way it did last week. With MVP and Lashley coming out to the ring to talk about the match on day one. 
Only this time, he's in the match, so they don't have to sit there and beg for it. He talked, like, of course, MVP does what he can. They'll talk Bobby Lashley up, that he's going to win the WWE Championship. He's going to be, it's going to be the almighty era once again on, w, on day one. And this just, mm, after what you saw last week, you saw Big E, Seth Rollins, and um, Kevin Owens all get embarrassed and pretty much destroyed by this man. If this man, if Bobby Lashley is not the WWE champion coming out of day one, you have wasted our fucking time and get on with our, let us get on with our lives. Big E, I don't expect, I don't expect Big E to lose, but I also would expect Big E to lose with having Mr. Bobby Lashley be the next WWE champion because it's the only thing that makes sense. You're not going to have this guy go out there, on, go out there, beat these three guys, and not win the WWE Championship at day one. It's the only, it's the right outcome, in my opinion. So Big E comes out, he talks for a minute, Bobby Lashley is like, well, he, he pretty much accuses Bobby Lashley, that he's like, dude, the Bobby Lashley I know wouldn't need anyone's help to beat me last week, but here I'm not, I'm, surpri I'm not surprised, but yet I'm not surprised that MVP came from behind and got my, got me in the leg, allowing you to pick up the win. Of course, Bobby Lashley's like, dude, I didn't need his help. I don't need his help last night, or last week. I don't need his help tonight, and I'm definitely not going to need his help at day one. So, then Bobby Lashley does, pretty much is like, dude, I said I didn't need your help last week, but you said that if I couldn't beat him, you could. So, let's do this. How about I get out of the ring? I let you two have your little, and, and, and let's see if you can actually take out Big E and allow all that to happen. So he gets out of the ring. Big E and him are squaring up. Looks like we're going to have something go down. And then Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens attack Big E. I'm uh, not Big E. Bobby Lashley on the outside, which leads to a big, huge brawl between these guys. And Bobby Lashley, well, Big E, saves, who, who tries to get involved with this too, saves Bobby Lashley because he doesn't want this shit to happen. He wants everyone to get a fair shake at day one because he's a babyface. He's the only technically babyface going into this match. So Bobby Lashley and Big E destroy and take out both these guys, making sure that they, um, that the match won't like so whatever whatever and then we go to the back after this is all done and what do you know and i call this on social media we're gonna get a can they coexist match as the final the, the main event is going to be bobby lashley and Big E versus seth rollins and kevin owens go fucking figure we see what happened between bianca belair and piper niven over the last few weeks Backs they warming up is Pat Belair. Sarah Schreiber approaches saying tonight's match is being built as the final chapter between she and Piper Niven, which I don't think anyone really cares about any final chapter. But honestly, I don't know why this needs a final chapter. Piper Niven has lost by countout and then pinfall. There was no there's no disputing who has who won this little mini feud. She says I she is the EST of WWE. And now one final match with Piper. So she can finally learn to never take me out. No matter how hard she tries, Belair says this will, this one will end up like all the others have, with her hand raised in the air, with an undeniable, uh, and she is done as she will be undeniable in WWE. We go to this match. It was pretty much the same match we saw last week, except for the finish, which I will admit, the KOD like holding Piper Niven up into the position for the KOD was impressive. I mean, it's no Otis, it's no deadlifting Otis and running, running from one pole to one post to the other on the outside on SmackDown when she was feeding with Bailey earlier this year. But it is impressive, I will say. So she hit her with the KOD, got the win, and then Belair gets up. She's running around like tears in her eyes. She's so excited that she won this match. And what did you get? Did you win the Women's Championship? Did you win a number one contendership for the Women's Championship? No. 
you have not. So why in the fuck are you sitting there having this big, huge celebration as if you did something impressive? Other than, of course, yes, like I said, the KOD. But you've beaten this woman three fucking times. There's nothing impressive about beating the same person over and over and over again. This also shows that WWE has zero value in Piper Niven. They just needed something for Bianca Belair to do because she's not in the women's title picture. That is Liv Morgan. So we've seen what happened recently between Austin Theory and Finn Balor. Theory is backstage with his phone. Kevin Patrick starts to comment, bringing up how Chairman and Vince and CEO Vince McMahon has invested his time into Theory as of late. Theory says he feels like the luckiest superstar in the world. And there's a reason why Vince McMahon is proud of him and thinks he sees a future. He does think that Vince McMahon sees him as a future WWE champion. Theory walks off and Kevin Patrick has this nice little line of, You better not lose. So, you know what's going to happen there. Finn Balor versus Austin Theory. Pretty good match. Finn Balor is amazing. Austin Theory is young and definitely somebody, if you gave him the time and investment, which they are right now, will it mean anything when Vince McMahon gets bored with his new little toy and is done with him? Probably not. But right now, just enjoy Austin Theory getting a somewhat of a push. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong. How do you make, how do you get a guy over Maybe have a damn good match with Finn Balor and pick up the Vin Ball victory. Sounds like a good idea. Or, 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 or here, here's a really bright idea. Let's have him go grab his phone. Let's have him go get a, try and get a selfie while he's pinning Finn Balor. Only for Finn Balor to crucifix him pit, and then get a two count. And then at 1619, hit the drop kick, hit the coup de grace, and get the one, two, three. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a way to get a guy over. Make him look fucking stupid. Have him get pinned and beaten. And then look and humiliated on live TV. That's how you get somebody over. I think I would have taken the first option. Have him beat Fowler, Balor, then get the Sophie as he's over top of his opponent that he beat. Austin Theory had a hell of a title match against Big E a couple weeks ago. This was his first match since then, and he ends up losing, looking like a, lo a geek. A loser who lost because he took his eye off the ball and lost to Finn Balor because of his own stupidity. This is how you expect to get a guy over? No. Oh, this is fucking stupid. How they're doing this. We see what happened last week between Miz, Maurice, after the run-in with Hall of Famer Edge. Miz is backstage with Omos. He says, that was, I, thank you for telling me all that and confiding in me. This should be an interesting episode of Miz TV. And we'll see, it, and we'll see if it's, as Edge can do better with Cutting Edge. He thanked Omos for sharing something with him. AJ Styles walks up and asks the Miz what it's talking about. AJ asks Miz what he's, um, he is, um, he he decides it doesn't matter, and Miz says he would see them in the ring. AJ says they will let Miz do the little song and dance tonight, then the ring. It says, AJ says they will let Miz do that little song and dance, and he wants to beat the Mysterios, go back into the title picture, and be on back on top before the end of the year. Omar says, like, grabbing his shoulder and shaking me a little, I can't wait. Which you can definitely tell was so sarcastic. Go to the ring, out comes Miz from Miz TV, I could care less. But... AJ Styles or Moss on there. Miz pretty much just says, Dude, you might think that everything's bad, that you guys are on the same page, you and Omos, AJ. But Omos, he told me a different story. He told me that he has not he has zero respect for you. And that he was the great he like when he came to WWE, they begged him to sign a contract. It took you 15 years, but they begged Omos for a con to sign a contract. And he was the brightest star. Brightest young star coming into WWE, and he's tired of carrying you. Which I'm sitting here like, are you fucking kidding me? This guy is dead. Not too long. He's caught, he will be dead on as a gimmick after him and AJ Styles are done. Omos is not a pre like having the Undertaker go on. What was it? Uh, the bump. And say this guy is a modern day Andre the Giant. Please. Undertaker probably knocking too many um, Jack Daniels back or something. Because that is an idiotic statement. Omos is going to go from this push guy with AJ. 
to getting a mini little push to falling off and doing absolutely nothing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Omos's big thing is that he hasn't been taken off of his feet yet. He hasn't been looking up at the lights. The minute that happens, he's done. There is nothing special about Omos after that. So, man, it's pretty much just saying that Omos has had enough of this. The respect is only one-sided. Everything is all one-sided. And Omos is pretty much done with AJ. Before Omos can say anything, out come the Mysterios. We have ourselves a match between the Mysterios, AJ Styles, and Omos. Omos does not get in this match whatsoever. AJ gets in going out with Dominic. AJ catches Dominic with a backbreaker. Dominic counters on move, but AJ blocks a hip toss and applies it on a dominable stretch. They tangle a bit, AJ, and uh, Dominic rolls AJ up for a two. AJ comes right back, hits the pale kick to the level Dominic. Ray tags in and ends up catching AJ with a tornado DDT. Then a 6-1-9. AJ goes on top for the big splash, but AJ gets his knees up. AJ walks over to give Omos the tag, and Omos just turns, and start, turns to the turnbuckle and doesn't want anything to do with AJ. AJ's like, Omos, what the hell, man? He gets rolled up, one, two, three, and the Mysterios win. So... Mysterious pick up a win as they go on to face the Street Profits next week in the RK Bro Tournament Finals. And AJ looks at Almas and he's like, is this how it's going to be? I should have never taken you under my wing because you're nothing but a piece of trash. Almas is not happy about this whatsoever. Looks over at AJ, goes, shoves AJ once. AJ starts fighting with Omos, starts beating on him. Of course, Omos is, knows Omos is selling none of this. AJ goes to the other side, comes up, for, looks for a phenomenal forearm. Omos catches him, picks him up, deadlifts him up, and then just drops him eight feet to the mat. Grabs a mic, and, and let's just say Omos doesn't have the best promo in the world. He says, the next time you see me, it'll be in a match with you. Trash that. Tosses the mic. And walks out where well, AJ looks up like very scared that he has to take on Omos promiscuously at day one. One and done, AJ Styles loses to Omos, of course he's going to, and then AJ Styles can go worry about being the next opponent for Biggie if Biggie's still champion after day one, or it could be a babyface taking on Lashley, um, Slash Lashley, Rollins, or Owens, whoever wins the title from him at day one, if that's the thing. I mean, on one hand, a tag team's are broken up once again. That's WWE's MO. They love breaking up tag teams. On the other hand, after this match is over with, AJ Styles can move on to do better things and can get away from this shit with Omos. So, honestly, I take the second one with AJ Styles finally getting away from Omos, and AJ Styles can go back to being the phenomenal one who didn't need Omos Never needed Omos and is better than Omos in every single way. And is going to go out there and give you everything he can. And can actually be a challenger for the WWE Championship. Probably at Rumble. Or if, if not, WrestleMania. Maybe AJ Styles can win the Royal Rumble. Who knows? Randy Orton versus Chad Gable. This could have been a great match if you gave them a lot of time. But um, sadly they didn't. I mean, it was still a good match. Ga Chad Gable is just so fucking good. Randy Orton is good when he wants to be. I just wish this match would have went another five minutes, maybe ten minutes, maybe. When I mean, half the shit that came after this, they could have just gave it all to this match. But Gable blocks a DDT. Goes behind Orton, blocks a German suplex. Gable with another arm drag, but Orton blocks the next one, leveling him with the RKO out of nowhere. Orton covers for the pin and the win in the middle of the ring. So, a, so Randy Orton wins, whereas his babyface partner, Matt Riddle, cannot. Matt Riddle was nowhere to be seen. He wasn't here tonight, probably at all. Probably waiting to work with the um, MSK down in NXT. Orton and, um, Otis enters the ring. He goes for a sneak attack. Orton goes for the RKO, but it gets blocked. Bounces off again, goes for another RKO. It gets blocked as well. Orton counters and tries to go for a third RKO. Otis blocks it, throws him out, and pushes him out of the ring. Orton makes his exit as Otis talks trash in the middle of the ring. Randy Orton could not get the RKO on Otis. That's going to be a big deal for when that happens. Because you know eventually Randy Orton is going to hit that RKO. But when is that going to happen? We see all the stuff with Big E and all them early in the show. Um, 
Bobby Lashley's in the back. He's looking like he's getting ready to get ready for the match. And MVP comes in talking about, do you trust Biggie? He's like, no. If I have to, I'll beat the hell out of him. But right now, I'm going to focus on those guys. And MVP is like, uh, dude, we were setting the trap, right? There was nothing else out there. And we're good, right? And Lashley doesn't say anything with that. He's just like, dude, I need the high train. Can you get me some water? MVP's like, sure, champ. I got you. Walks off. Lashley opens his locker again to get ready. And it's like, are we teasing a breakup between MVP and Lashley? Because that would be the biggest mistake for Lashley's career. Do y'all remember what Bobby Lashley's career was like before MVP got before MVP became his manager? Uh, Lashley and Lana married. The whole cuck, cucking thing with him, Mir, um, Rusev and Lana. The Lashley sisters, all that other shit. Bobby Lashley before he got MVP was just another guy on the roster. Bobby Lashley with MVP. Won the WWE Championship and held the WWE Championship for majority of 2021. So having Bobby Lashley and MVP have this little tease right here, tension right here. No, motherfucker, don't do that shit. Bobby Lashley needs MVP in his corner. Needs MVP to make him look like a bigger star than he is. Having them tease Bobby Lashley... Breaking away from MVP would be the biggest mistake in Bobby Lashley's career in WWE. If you do that, you might as well just let them both go. Just saying. Championship contender match. United States champion Damian Priest versus Dolph Ziggler. Why is this match happening? Because Damian Priest beat Bobby, La beat Bobby Roode two weeks ago. But, um, Dolph Ziggler super kicked him afterwards. And of course, last week, Finn Balor got pinned in a non-title match. And a tag team match with, those, with um, Damian Priest on... Against the do dirty dogs. Now, how to make a babyface champion look stupid? Did Damian Priest get pinned in this match? No. But Damian Priest, he was he was on top. He was beating down Dolph Ziggler. He was looking like he was zeroing in on a win. Dolph Ziggler referee was distracted. Bobby Roode cut, um, cuts him like, like trips his leg up and knocks him off the apron. And then we get the Jekyll and Hyde version of Damian Priest, who goes after, Bob, after Bobby Roode, who trips over the stairs, allowing Damian Priest to come over and start beating the fucking hell out of him. But Bobby, but that was that plan worked as Damian Priest gets counted out and. Dolph Ziggler wins, getting a match at Wrestle at day one more than likely. Dumb, 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 dumb. Uh. One twenty-four-seven bullshit. Don't give a fuck. Moving on. Kevin Patrick starts Finn Balor backstage and asks him how it feels to defeat Austin Theory after his recent antics. Balor says the win was satisfying, satisfying and he hopes Theory took plenty of selfies while getting his ass beat. Now it's on to a more, more important thing, and Austin Theory suddenly attacks. Beats Balor down, talks some trash, and slams him over, the throat, over a road case. Then gets his phone and takes some selfies to make himself feel better. So you knew that he was going to get his heat back. You're not going to have Austin Theory look stupid and then... Not get his heat back because that's the only way WWE knows heels to get their heat is to make him look stupid in the middle of the ring and then have him beat up the opponent, the opponent uh, later on. We get the cutting edge with Maurice. I really couldn't give a shit. Val, um, Austin Theory is backstage with Vince McMahon. <sighs> Vince just, I don't want Vince on TV. Can you, like, half the time you can't understand what Vince is saying. <sighs> the only thing you can have is that Vince McMahon men uh, mentions that maybe I should just fire you because I love firing people before the holidays. Which, could that be a sign that next, that in this week we're getting firings? It would not surprise me that Vince McMahon and Ke in, in them between on the 23rd or even the 24th, we're going to get a bunch of firings. It wouldn't surprise me. It's just like Vince McMahon. He would do such a thing. 
So, Boomies is the, is the um, special guest on the cutting edge. She comes up with this boohoo story that, that she's a mother. She's, like, she does everything while Miz is out working. She cooks, she cleans, she takes care of babies. And... That if she was to be, if anything would have happened to her, who's going to take care of her kids? Probably your maid. Probably your nanny that you have because you guys make enough money to afford a nanny. And all this boo-hoo, whiny-ass bullshit. And Edge is like, is anybody buying this shit? Anybody at all? Miz, eventually his music hits. He comes from behind. Edge meets him and beats him down. But Maurice... Takes her purse and smacks him in the back of the head, edge that is. Slaps him, allowing Miz to hit the skull crushing finale. Which, Maurice, of course, then, it was all a ruse the entire time. Everybody could have seen that a mile away. They kiss, they all hug, and everything else, and then they get out. And it was like, ugh. You know, you know that Beth Phoenix is going to get involved, right? You know this is going to lead to that. Which then tells you that day one is not going to be the only match between Miz and Edge. Miz and Edge have their match at day one. Miz, Edge, Miz, Maurice, Edge, and Beth Phoenix at the Royal Rumble. End it there and be done. I don't want to see Edge be wasted at WrestleMania. And, like, I've been very vocal. Like, I really don't care about Edge being back. But if you're going to have Edge under contract with matches, this is the best you could do for Edge. If it's Edge and, ben and Beth Phoenix versus Miz and Maurice at, Wrestle Maurice at WrestleMania, talk about a wasted, op a wasted match for Miz, for Edge. The fact that he has to waste a WrestleMania match with his... Which, which honestly, if you would have had literally anybody else... Honestly, if you wanted to fire John Morrison and Tyler Valkyrie, that would have been the match to have with Miz at WrestleMania. Is Miz, Maurice versus Taya and fucking John Morrison. But no... Edge, who should be going up against somebody who's on his level, is going to have to probably waste a WrestleMania match going up against The Miz. Wow. That's bad. Zelina Vega versus Rhea Ripley. This match is a rematch from last week with no interference from Carmella and Nikki Cross because they have been banned from ringside. Get another Veer Mahan coming soon vignette, which, by the way, Veer... And Zia Lee both got coming, started getting their coming soon promos in the same week. Zia Lee made her debut last week. Veer Mahan is still coming. Even though he's been on main events having matches and who gives a shit about main events. So when is he coming? Don't know. Don't care. Probably the week after, the night after day, the night after, the two nights after day one. So this match didn't even last two minutes. Nikki is walking back, watching backstage. Z Z Zelina Vega got a stunner on um, Rhea Ripley, but they tangle. Ripley gets a super kick and um, gets just grabs fucking Zelina Vega. Deadlifts her, hits the riptide. One, two, three. The match didn't even last a few minutes, and it just shows you where in the pecking order. Rhea Ripley is. Bianca Belair, not even in the women's title picture right now, had a match with Piper Niven that went through at least one commercial break. It lasted maybe 10 to 15 minutes. This match, Rhea Ripley has not had a match since she, since I don't know when, that's lasted more than five minutes. She's on the bottom end of of the spectrum while Rhea, while Bianca Belair and Piper Niven to an extent until her time with Be um, Bianca Belair is over is up with the other like Becky, Sherbot, Sasha and those who get 20 minutes at the most for their matches 15-20 minutes Rhea Ripley started this year winning the win like going all the way to Wrestlemania winning the women's championship from Oscar and had the WWE Championship for to Money in the Bank, if I'm correct. Yeah, Money in the Bank. And has just had this downward spiral ever since. Honestly, since 2020 at WrestleMania, when she lost the NXT Championship, she just hasn't got the momentum back. Even winning the Women's Championship at WrestleMania wasn't good enough this year. 
it's just sad that she could have been up there with the Charlottes and the Beckys and the Baileys and the Sasha Banks and the Bianca Belairs and the Oscars, whatever the fuck she's at. I would not be surprised if Oscar gets future endeavored in the next six months. But she could have been up there with them and she just isn't there. And it's booking. Now she's wrestling matches with the likes of Zelina Vega and Carmella and Nikki Cross. That don't even last five minutes. It sucks to see Rhea Ripley where she's at in the company. Sarah, Shri Sarah Schreiber is stopped Biggie, Biggie backstage asking if he and Bobby Lashley can cope. And he's like, ah, don't say that nasty C word even though he says it. He gets hyped but Sarah Schreiber steps away when Lashley appears. Biggie asks if they can come, can, can talk, came to talk or fight. Or does he need to prepare for another sneak attack by MVP? Lashley doesn't need the help to win the WWE title, but tonight he's focused on beating up Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins and wonders if he can trust Big E. He's like, dude, you don't have to worry about me, but leave Montel Montavious, Montel Montavious Porter backstage. Lashley tells him not to worry about P. He can take care of that. Again, it feels like the teasing Big E is going... I'm not Big E. Bobby Lashley and MVP are going to be breaking up very, very soon, which would be very detrimental to Bobby Lashley's career. If you actually look, Bobby Lashley, the best part, the biggest times in Bobby Lashley's career, Impact Wrestling and in, in WWE, have been with MVP. Keep him with MVP. Don't do this teasing bullshit. Liv Morgan comes out. She's wearing a tape. Her arm is taped up as well as she's carrying a kendo stick. She's standing in the ring with the kendo. She talks last week's promo where she challenged Wild Woman's champion Becky Lynch to a rematch. Before she got her arm injured, Lynch then accepted her day one match. Saxon hypes up Morgan vs. Liv, but Morgan vs. Lynch at day one and wonders if Morgan will be 100%. She goes on about how Lynch tried to help her at day one, help herself at day one by injuring her arm last week. She goes on about how she couldn't let Becky get up her hand. So when, Liv, when Lynch said she was going to go home and train at her private gym, which is Seth Rollins Wrestling School, it's not her wrestling school, it's Seth's wrestling school, let's get that straight. That she was going to follow her, and that Becky, this was Becky's plan the entire time. So, we see a video, we see a video of Becky, of, of Liv showing up at the school, and we see a woman who has red hair fighting and training in the ring, when we see, when they show this camera angle and we saw, see Liv Morgan standing where she doesn't see who this person is, it looks like Becky Lynch. So Liv takes that kendo stick and just whacks this person in the back. They fall over and it's not Becky Lynch. And Liv is like, oh, sh she has this look of, oh, shit, I just fucking, I have a lawsuit on my hand because I assaulted this person who has nothing to do with Becky and me. Becky shows up from behind. She tries to attack Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan gets out of that, gets the kendo stick, and whacks Liv Becky Lynch a couple times, getting her to get out of the ring. Of course, Becky is telling all of the people around the ring, get her out of here. Get her out of here. She's like, yeah, you better leave that ring. Better leave. You can't, don't ever show your face around here. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, this looks so bad. I don't know who directed this i don't know who produced this i don't know who put this thing together this entire thing looked like shit i don't know like of course vince mcmahon is the one who was behind it vince mcmahon was the one who um wrote who scripted it but it looks just like it looks so bad absolutely so fucking bad we go back to the ring and live amidst Becky may have had the one had a step ahead of her, but she learned Becky is afraid of her as she had one of her students dressed up to look like her because she knew Liv was coming for payback. Liv didn't want to beat up the innocent woman, but she was coming for but she's happy when she thought it was Becky. Liv goes on and says it will be her arm raised at the end of WWE Day One. And Becky will have all the time in the world to hang out with her baby and her quote unquote hot husband. Liv says Morgan can try. Uh, Liv, I'm um, sorry. Becky. Liv says Becky can try to break her arm, but at day one she's going to break Becky's face and leave with the Raw Women's Title. Out comes Becky to a mixed reaction, which she's always going to get because not everybody wants to boo B Becky Lynch. 
The reason some people aren't booing Becky Lynch is because they love Liv Morgan and we want to see Liv Morgan be women's champion, get that opportunity to carry that belt for a couple months and be a Raw uh, women's champion. Which honestly, she should have won the Raw women's championship at in the first title match. They get the rematch at day one. Liv wins, but it's not... It, it, okay, it would have been Liv... Defends the title, retains the title, but Becky could have won by disqualification. Count out. Some kind of false finish so you get to the Royal Rumble where Liv Morgan, of course, would drop the championship. But she would hold held the championship for a month and a half, which would have been great for her. But here we are. She's going to probably win it day one and then lose the title at the Royal Rumble. Or, 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 if she doesn't lose the title at the Royal Rumble, there will be a match between those two in Saudi Arabia where Becky Lynch will win in Saudi Arabia because they haven't had a women's title match, a women's title change hands in Saudi Arabia, if I am correct. And Becky will go win the title in Saudi Arabia. Liv Morgan will go on her merry way, being back where she was before she feuded with um, Becky Lynch, but had the distinction of being a one-time Raw Women's Champion, which if you would have told me that last year, I would have told you you're crazy. She congratulates Liv for beating up a poor girl senseless, but she only hit her with a kendo stick once, so I really don't say that. Becky goes on and says she paid her dues, which is why she's not stopped, and I'll take more than a few kendo shots to keep her down, and when you're big time Bex, you're too big, you're, you're, you're too big to be down, they have words, and Becky says Liv did, did show her student that, students that everyone can get lucky at least once, but at day one, she will show them that the luck does run out. Liv has stepped up more than she thought she would, Becky goes on and she says she can't scare her any longer because she will start off the new year as women's champion. And says her spotlight feels good and Becky can come check it out and finish what she tried to start. And they have some more words. And she says, well, you think I'm stupid? Don't it's like you think I'm stupid? I'm not going to go in there, especially with you swinging that cane around all willy nilly. It's like, oh, no, I didn't get this cane for me. I got it for you. Threw it out to out of the ring at Becky and told her, hey, come on, pick it up and let's go. She's like, don't insult me. Don't insult the Raw Women's Champion. You're just lucky I have a private check, jet to catch. Tosses down the mic and walks out. Do a mixture of boos because, again, nobody wants to boo Becky Lynch. The only people booing Becky Lynch right now are the people who want to see Liv Morgan win the Raw Women's Championship. Who wanted to see her win the Raw Women's Championship when you should have had her win it in that main event on Monday Night Raw two weeks ago. Again, would have given her the championship, would have given her a nice little title run. Instead, she might only, we're going to get like a Jeff Hardy type WWE title run where she wins the title on day one, loses it at the Royal Rumble, just like Jeff did when he was the WWE championship champion and lost it at the Royal Rumble. That's just what I'm going to go with that comparison. MVP and Bobby Lashley earlier tonight, and we see how Lashley was attacked by Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. We see Owens and Owens are having a friendly disagreement backstage. Owens thinks they should be called SRKO. Let's not go with that, please. That is dumb as fuck. Which, ugh. yeah, I can okay, I can get behind a Seth Rollins and Biggie tag team. I really could. I mean. That if that's the case and that's the way they go with this, they're not winning the WWE Championship and it's going to come down to Big E and Bobby Lashley. We'll talk about that on Tuesday. We'll talk about that on Friday next week when we do our predictions. So we have the match here. It was a match. It was an all right match. Rollins tags in, hits the top rope frog splash. Basically, it comes down to Big E. Uh, Bobby Lashley pins Kevin Owens in the middle of the ring. Seth Rollins came just a fraction hair shy of not being able to, to like a fraction hair of kicking, of stopping the pinfall, which the commentators thought he actually did. After the match, they beat the hell out of Bobby Lashley. They take the stairs, they hit Big E to take him out, pop up, uh, um, tape a power bomb to Bobby Lashley. Then they take the, they take Bobby Lashley over to the stairs. Big um, Kevin Owens has him set up. Seth, he's telling Seth Rollins to do it. Do it. Seth Rollins backs off for a minute. Looks like he's just going to leave it to Kevin Owens. But then he runs and stomps him. Leaving him pretty much for dead. They get in the ring. They 
shake hands, and then they get a big, huge celebratory hug, raise each other's hands, and it looks like we got a new alliance between Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, which honestly isn't the worst thing. I could see these guys going out there and having a hell of a run if you wanted to make these two a tag team, which would be fine by me. I mean, if these two go on to actually be a team, or if it's just for day one, that's one thing. But if they actually go on to be a team, I mean, it replaces Omos and AJ Styles, and you can have these guys. If you're going to have, if you're going to, if these guys do not, if these guys are still a team or an alliance after day one, that's who you have beat Bray, um, um, RK Bro. Seth Rollins beat and, Seth and Kevin Owens. If they are, if this is not just a temporary thing and they actually are going to be a tag team for, for the foreseeable future, which it probably is just a um, temporary thing going into day one. Who the fuck knows? But it would give these guys something to do. And it would give Kevin Owens that tag team title, which I don't think he actually has yet. I don't think he's won tag team gold yet. And that would be the perfect team, in my opinion, to be RK Bro. Honestly, it would be. And they could do it after a Rumble. They could do it at WrestleMania, whichever one you want to go with. But I don't know which way they're going to go right now. And that's how Monday Night Raw went off the air. So if, like I said, it could be a temporary alliance. It could be an alliance that lasts between now and day one, 2020, or whatever they go with. 2023, I honestly could see them doing another day one pay-per-view. Let me see the, um, when is day one? When is 2023 January? 2023 January is on a Sunday, so yeah. I honestly think day one is going to be a two-year, is going to be a thing next year as well, because uh, conveniently, January is on a Saturday this year, and next year it's on a Sunday, January 1st. So I totally can see day one being a pay-per-view next year, but that's neither here nor there. But if Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins are between now and, say, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, or if there is a day one next year, day one 2023, are an alliance, a tag team, and they want to call themselves SR, SRKO or whatever they want to call themselves, they are the guys I would see beating RK Bro for the tag team titles because, honestly, no to the Street Profits, no to the Mysterios, Chad Gable and Otis, I would see too. Maybe they're the ones to do it because they've had the going on with the, um, RK Bro as well. But, yeah, it is what it is. Monday Night Raw, I really want to see Liv Morgan win the Women's Championship, have a decent title reign. Honestly, I would love to see it be one of those things where she keeps it going into WrestleMania if she was, but I don't see that happening. I don't see Becky not going into WrestleMania as the Raw Women's Champion, but I could see her losing the title to Liv Morgan at day one. Possibly, not retain, possibly have Liv Morgan retain at the Royal Rumble. And then have another match at Saudi Arabia. Because you know they're going back to Saudi Arabia in February. There's no pay-per-view um, pay for February right now. But it's either February or March they're going to Saudi Arabia. Have them have Le Morgan drop the title in Saudi Arabia. Because it would be the first time ever, if I'm correct. Because Bailey defended the title in Saudi Arabia. One. Becky defended in Saudi Arabia. One. Charbonne, I believe, also defended in Saudi Arabia and won. So we haven't... Oh, wait, Charbonne didn't defend in Saudi Arabia, did she? No, 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 no. But we've had two women's title matches, if I can recall, and there hasn't been a title change in Saudi Arabia, but even though we've had the Universal title get a, um, and all that. So I could definitely see if they wanted to have, give Lord Morgan a somewhat of a title run. She's not going to WrestleMania as the women's champion. But I could see her being the first person to drop the woman, like, for a title change to happen in Saudi Arabia. Because you know WWE would want to do that too. And it hasn't happened yet. And Liv Morgan would be the perfect person for them to have drop the championship at, in Saudi Arabia and back to Becky Lynch. Having Lynch going to WrestleMania against probably the person winning the Royal Rumble. Whoever that may be. Damian Priest, Dolph Ziggler, who gives a shit? Damian Priest should not be losing that championship until WrestleMania. And have it be somebody who's coming from NXT, if anybody. But that is your Monday Night Raw review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds at the France Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for the aftermath of Winter is Coming, the Holiday Bash Part 1 with Adam Cole, baby, versus um, Orange Cassidy. 
Ruby Soho versus Nyla Rose, and so much more. Until then, my name is The France, and I'll see you guys later.